<laughs> I know. <laughs> we better make this quick. <laughs> Today, we are gonna be reviewing the new Titleist T-Series to see if the marketing meets the product. Here in the booth today uh, with Caleb, one of our other PGA professionals here on staff and an actual Titleist staffer as well. What we're gonna be doing today is we're going to be testing head to head each of the new T-Series irons. Uh, Cause in theory, if the marketing's correct, as we go up the line, we should see higher spin, higher launch and a better descent angle. Um, it's important for you guys to know that we're gonna be testing this all with the same shaft. Uh, we agreed on the new Fujikora Axiom 105X with the VelaCore technology. Um, I'm going to be using the uh, Mizuno Tour X golf ball. Caleb, what ball are you going to be using? I'm going to be using the Pro V1X Left Dash. It's the golf ball I currently play. So I want to see how the T-Series um, perform with the ball that I play golf with. And I think what's going to be fun about this video is it's going to really kind of highlight all the tech that has changed compared to the last series. I think, yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see if we do actually see a change in trajectory with each model. Yeah. That's what I want to see. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a few swings each with each head, and then we're gonna take our, like he said, our current irons, like I'm playing the Ping I-230s to see how they stack up against, um, and see which head I would play if I had to play these irons. Um, I think that's really important. Is what's cool with this lineup is there's really a head for everybody, and they all look good. I think we'd both agree on that. Even the game improvement T350. Yeah, yeah on, uh, on paper, it looks like a very complete iron lineup. First we'll start at the bottom and work our way up with the T100 and end with the T350. So what we're going to do is we're going to get five uh, hopefully good shots with each iron and then at the end show you a general synopsis of all the data to kind of explain that descent angle versus launch angle versus spin and ball speed and compare all the heads at the end. So hopefully we can put five good swings on there for you. What's the popular thing right now? Let's go Barbie. Tug, but it honestly wasn't too bad because that's flush. There's the compensation. <laughs> I felt pretty good. I know I hit behind it just a little bit, but still got out there. Yeah. Amazing how much softer it feels with this shaft. That was probably the best one out of the bunch. Yeah, that was a good one. There you go. Alright, thank you. Enjoy. Alright, let's see how the T100 feels. That stopped quick. Felt good. Uh, just a hair hot on the face, but still felt pretty good. A little bit of toe in the dirt. Might go in. bit more toe in the dirt there. <laughs> it's amazing though that Axiom, that 105, like how much smoother it feels. It, honestly, like the shaft feels really good. I can switch to the shaft right now. That was a good swing. That's probably the most flush one I've hit. Smoked it. So what'd you think after hitting it? Um, Right away, the feel, it, it feels very similar to the 620 MBs I'm currently playing. Um, something I feel like I could switch to pretty easily. Yeah. Like for somebody that's played blade irons for a long time, this would be not that scary to switch to. Yeah, I think for me, what was nice is I, I didn't put the best swings on it, and I really didn't lose that much in terms of distance or accuracy. Like, I'm still okay. 
Yeah. Uh, traditionally speaking, with a player's iron like this, when we have those miss hits, um, they normally get out of control real easy, real fast. And I think combination with that Axiom shaft, I mean, it's just a home run. Yeah. yeah the shaft felt great. The uh, Quite honestly, I even kind of mentioned I hit a couple there where I, I my bad habits to put the toe in the ground. I got the toe in the ground with a couple of those. Didn't really hurt me all that bad. I mean, I hooked one, but that was it. Yeah. So uh, turf interaction felt good on it. Uh, it's nice and crisp. Solid, solid feedback is what I would say. Awesome. Well, yeah. it'll be. I'll be curious to see how the 150 kind of stacks up it. since the 100S is uh, no longer available, and the 150 is kind of a completely different. It's its own chassis. So yeah, the real test now is to see how that 150 feels compared yeah, to this. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is the one I'm most excited to hit. This is the T150. I was a big AP2 fan in the early 2000s. I had the 712 AP2s in the bag for a long time. As we've kind of mentioned in our initial tech talk as well as our podcast, 150 is its own club. Uh, so unlike the 100S, the 150 is built on its own chassis. So we should see a little bit more speed out of this than what we saw with the 100 and uh, hopefully a little bit more forgiveness. So we'll hop into it. Yeah, that was a good one right out of the gate. <laughs> I don't even want to hit another one. <laughs> <laughs> that one was honestly a little bit towards the toe and I got away with it. Yeah. I say still a good shot. You have been consistent with the start line on this club. Yeah. Oh, there we go. With a little quick in transition there. That's honestly a good one to see though, because that's more realistic of what you know, what, yeah, what we see. could actually expect outside. Honestly, to me, that shot's just as important as the middle of the faces. We need to know where the miss hits go. Correct. There you go. That's a real good one. Well, I figured I'd give the folks one more good one after how bad that last one was. <laughs> Second guy is always better, right? That's right. Well. It's gonna be exciting to see how you hit it. Uh, obviously, you had a little bit better go around with the 100, which you're more similar to that shape, so. It's gonna be interesting to see how this feels. All right, T150, see how this feels. Right away, I hadn't even put it behind the ball yet. Kyle, I can already tell this is a little bit bigger golf club. Yeah. yeah it looks, looks a little different for sure. Well, especially with you liking more traditional. Mm-hmm. See how it feels, though. Was a good swing. Yeah, it felt pretty good. A little bit better height on that one too. Well, we all know height is not my problem. You know, based on again, you're more of a traditionalist. Like you're not afraid to play clubs from the '60s and '70s. You know, just to have a retro bag. Um, with this being a slightly larger top line, you know, do you feel like for a better ball striker, a better player, that would be a little bit deterring, or do you feel like it's still clean enough to where even that more traditionalist would still put these in the bag. Honestly, my initial thoughts, the top line doesn't really distract me that much. Okay. Top line, behind the ball, once I've gotten used to it, there's enough shaping and roundness to it. It doesn't look that thick. So if you are a player that really likes a thin top line, this could be comfortable to you. If you're a player that likes having a little bit more top line, it could be comfortable to you. What I'm noticing right now, these first couple swings, I'm struggling a little bit more with the sole. Okay. I'm feeling a lot more drag in the toe section of the sole here for me. Hence why, that's why I always play traditional golf clubs, narrower sole. I don't have to worry about that as much. That's a good swing. Okay. It's a little shot. It's a little bit in the heel, so maybe hook it. That was actually the best strike with it. That was hit good. That was that money ball at the end. Yeah, yeah. that one smoked. Now that we've got kind of five shots each with 100 and 150, what's kind of the, your general synopsis with the 150? Um, overall feel is very similar to the 100. Yep. Like how agree. the golf ball feels on the club face, the sound at impact is very similar. Like I say, the thing I noticed right away was I struggled a little bit more with turf interaction. I could tell I was starting to get that toe to drag a little bit more. Um, so like if it were an ideal world, I'd like to have a little bit different shaping in the toe for me. But that's me. So, what well, are your I thoughts? Think, uh, for me, 
I liked a little bit better than 100. Uh, just because whether it's comfort or anything, it's just there's a little bit more help there for yeah. like the miss that I had. Like, for you, your start line was consistent every time. It um, started in the same place. And like I'm the opposite. Like I, I love the way that the sole went through the ground, which is similar to the iron that I play. Right. Um, I think it's kind of unique that Voki actually worked with them on this project to create this variable camber sole um, across this whole series. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll be really interested to see how you feel the 200 and 350 going through the turf. Yeah. Just, uh, since same. it'll be a little bit more bounced, a little bit wider sole. I think it's interesting too is like, I mean, that last shot I hit there, peak height of 124 feet. Yeah. That's pretty high. And we failed to mention this is actually two degrees stronger than the T100. So still getting a very high ball flight. Even kind of a stronger loft. Stronger loft yeah. at the golf club. So like that golf club's doing what appears so far. If we hadn't looked at the data yet, it said it's doing and that was kind of the goal with those D18 tungsten weights, getting them a little lower and eliminating those weld points mm -hmm. was to kind of create more height, yep. repositioning where that CG is located. Yep. All right, so now we've got the T200. The thing that I'm most interested in here is sound. Um, not to pick on tightless, but the last T200, when you hit it in the middle of the face, you almost wish you didn't. Uh, it sounded hollow and clicky, and it just wasn't very pleasing. So... Just like I mentioned with the 150, they repositioned some of the weight here and also reshaped that uh, forged body a little bit. So I'll be really curious to hear the sound. And I'm hoping for a little bit more speed. That's a good one out of the gate. Yeah, I mean, even for a little bit groove low, it's still got up in there. That might go in. Go in. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I will take a group low hill miss like that every you day. Take the pin out. <laughs> Man, science says pull the pin. Yeah. That's like when you're, it's almost like a Hideki moment. Like, yeah, <laughs> edit a groove low. You're complaining <laughs> about it while it's going in the hole. Love it. That was flush too. Yeah. And what was nice is that one was in the center and it didn't make that high pitch click. It, like it didn't ting. From outside the shot, like looking at it, uh, it sounded good. Haven't noted that I hit one in the center today too. That just a hair low? Yeah. Still got up in the air though. I think that's the only thing I've noticed so far is for me, I feel like I'm having to dig down after the golf ball yeah. a bit more with this club than the 150 or 100. That's twice you now. You just wanted to keep it consistent. Keep it consistent. Shot to the point fifty. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That was pretty flush there. Yeah. I think my only thing, I felt like I fought this the entire time. You felt like you had to work a little harder for it? Yeah, even though, again, it's supposed to be a little bit more forgiving, but for my swing type, I felt like it was harder for me to want to get down after the mm. golf ball interesting because i bottom grooved and when i say bottom groove like maybe the second bottom grooved according to quad um almost every shot yeah except for the one so interesting i think that's that camber maybe we'll check it out all right so t200 now kyle i'm interested to see how this club sounds i actually played in the previous generation i played the t200 utility three iron as a driving iron for a little while and i actually swapped it out of the bag because i didn't like how it sounded so let's see how this sounds. You can't hold one if you fly it over. <laughs> it was hit solid. <laughs> I will have to admit, um, listening to how it sounded when you struck it from behind the golf ball, I didn't hear any click. Yeah. I heard a little bit of click there, but the, the sound was still better than the previous generation. Smoked it. A little bit of shut face makes the ball go far. Oh, there's some toe in the dirt. That one was flush. It's kind of interesting. It looks like there's a little bit more of a variance uh, as far as left to right and right to left with this club. For me? Yeah. Um, for me, I'd actually say this is going to sound condescending, but this is why I've always chose to not play irons like this. Uh, once I get into a little bit bigger club head, 
for whatever reason, I just don't focus the same way. Yeah. I might still hit the ball solid, but I don't I don't zone in and, and, and create the strike that I want to create. Now, I will say I hit five, for me, really good shots with this. I hit them all very solid, um, but we saw that dispersion. Yeah, compared to the 150, though, where your start line pretty much stayed the same, yeah. this ball almost had a different starting line every time. I would say on the sound department, greatly improved over last generation. Yep. Still just a slight click in it. Very subtle though. It's hard to really hear it if you're not li like listening for it. I will say again here, that last one I hit 132 foot peak height. This one went higher than the 150, or yeah, the 150. So so far so good on marketing. Yeah, yeah. right. It's uh, kind of cool to see how high we can actually hit these and not yeah. trying to. And I think that's what's going to be fun about this last iron, the T350, is um, we've both kind of mentioned it. Visually standing over the golf ball for a game improvement iron, yeah. it's clean. I'll be honest, it's the furthest from what I would normally play. This is the one I'm most looking forward to hitting. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see how it does. It may seem silly, but a lot of people tend to not play game improvement irons because of how they look sitting in your golf bag. Um, and that's just where golf is such a mental thing. Like, oh, my buddies are going to make fun of me because of how the club looks. Titleist nailed the look of this golf club. Uh, I mean, this is just classy. looks like a sports car. I mean, a lot of really nice straight lines, um, just a good looking golf club. So I would have no issues honestly playing this as more of a driving iron just based on look because behind the golf ball, yes, it is larger, but there's not that traditional offset that a lot of these super game improvement irons have. So uh, really excited to hit this one. That was better. That's, that sounds really good. That first one, I just tugged a little bit. Yeah. I think the thing I'm most impressed with is even with the loft difference of all these golf clubs, when I make a stock swing like that, they're all essentially going the same distance. You're not getting that jumper, are you? Uh, yeah, there's no, almost like a, Traditionally, Titleist has always had hot spots. Yeah. I mean, Webb Simpson says that a lot about his irons. That's why they redesigned them. But I haven't had one ball that's given me a jumper or a surprise like, oh, that one went 20 yards further. I think you got to keep in mind with that that mass impact, that support behind the face that's not supporting the face. This is the third generation of it now, so like they've they've gotten a lot better with how they positioned that in the golf club. I think. Yeah, and honestly, uh, the sound of this is for me way better than T200. So even though it's improved, I, I thought for sure with them closing the back of this thing up, it was going to get Have super a loud and clicky. Yeah. And, um, I say sounds good from, from you know back here. And like I said, behind the ball, it's not anything too appalling to look at, even though it's not necessarily the category of iron that I would be interested in. Right. It's amazing to see just how consistent it has been. Well, there's the consistent one. Yep. You got one of those in all of them. Yeah, so. Oh, you still hit the green with this one, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's that forgiveness. Yeah. Like I said, I was most excited for for this just because it's the most different. Yeah. Especially when you hear the word tightless. This is in a category they this normally shine This is not what you think of traditionally, for sure. So, yeah. really excited for that. Cool. Let's see how it feels. All right, so T350. I say initial impressions right away, you can definitely tell the, the size difference between this and 200. Yep. Definitely looks a little different behind the ball. That ball climbed for a long time. <laughs> yep. Honestly, that's a, a almost a nice surprise that it didn't go over 200 yards. <laughs> well, but still, 131 foot apex. Yeah. 132, so. A great landing angle. Might have been just a hair on the toe, but hit pretty good. There's 202. Toe to the ground. Still. Right beside the other one. Yep. Oh, I got you one, Kyle. A little thin one. That's going to hit the line, though. <laughs> yeah. That's that forgiveness, man. Honestly, it surprised me. Yeah. You know, um, I, I, like, I kind of expected the sound to be 
little more hollow, a little more clicky. It, honestly, this might have sounded better than 200. Yeah, I would agree. You know, um, honestly, and, and it felt really good too. It does not feel like a game improvement iron at all. Yeah, definitely a lot softer than what I expected mm -hmm. overall feel. Uh, typically when we get into this category of irons, there's kind of a little bit of trade, some feel for forgiveness. Right. Um, and I feel like they blended it very well. I would say for the, the player that's going to play this iron, this is probably an iron that's going to feel way better than what they've been used to having. In yeah, especially in that category of the market. You yeah. know, everything's normally cast. Uh, really cool. Well, cool. Well, we're going to hit our gamers, see how it compares, and then to the club that we think we'd play in this. Yeah. Um, I think for me, just kind of based off what we just saw, I'd probably play a T150. Um, kind of a blend set Kind of there. a blend set and do yeah. T100 in the short sticks yeah. um, and 150 in the long and then blend the lost accordingly. Right. Well, let's hit our current gamers and see how they compare. Awesome. So this is my gamer, Ping i230. Um, I do have some temporary shafts in there. Uh, I've been dealing with a back injury, so I normally play the MMT125TX, but I put my old rifle 6.5s back in. I uh, can't wait to get my swing speed back up to get the better feeling shaft in here. Uh, but I re I'm really curious to see how this stacks up against the whole lineup. Um, like I mentioned, I think I would probably play a blended set of the 150s and 100 based on the shaping of this iron. Um, so we'll see kind of if the numbers, you know, will do it justice. So. Good swing on your first one there. See, like that was a groove low and it still yep. got up. That's kind of the reason I switched to these irons is you could have a miss like that and I'm not giving up 20, 30 yards. Yeah. <laughs> I almost started laughing over that one. I've had a miss it with every iron. Good swing. You gonna do it? Almost slam dunked it. Yep, tried. Awesome. All right, so I'm gonna hit my current gamer here. This is the Titleist 620 MB. Um, I am playing the Mitsubishi Chemical MMT 125 TX in it. Uh, these irons have been played off and on for three years, so we've, we've done some testing with these. I think what I wanna see, and, and Kyle, you can attest to this, since I play old traditional lofts this is a 37 degree seven iron so by the standards of loft on these irons very weak across the board 32 degrees is what we're seeing with seven irons right yeah. now all the way down to 27 and a half of course i put the toe in the dirt on the first one that's a better strike Solid there too. A little high on the face. And that was it. Good. Yep. Well, we got my data up across the board, my club, and all the new T series, and uh, it's kind of interesting the little chart we got up there. It is actually. Um, if you look at the side comparison, it's very the yellow is a T100. If we look, we see T100, T150, T200, then your current, and then the T350. Yep. There's a nice little staircasing happening there um, from the actual side of where the golf ball landed at. And one thing that I really like about it is obviously with my injury right now, I'm not hitting it as far, but how consistent, even though there is what six degrees of loft difference across here yeah how consistent the overall distance really is yeah you basically go from 170 to 180 uh, and the longest one being the t350 which we kind of knew that was probably yeah, going to happen longest loft fastest right. ball speed um so no real surprise there the spin rates are actually more consistent than what i thought they would be i, I thought we'd see maybe a little bit more of a drop now we do see the the bigger heads like the um uh, the T200 and the T350 have a little lower spin, but when we go and look at our, our chart with all the data, we'll actually see that our yeah, yeah, thing same thing thing the same. same. Yeah. yeah. So very, uh, very interesting. Some cool data there. It's cool to see the scare casing side to side like that. 
And well, like I said, we'll see a little bit more when we look at the actual chart. Awesome. So now we got your data up here across yeah. the board, and now we kind of see that same staircase happening up at the top. I say the side to side comparison is very interesting. Again, we can see that the, my current irons, 2100, are landing in about the same spot. And then there's a 150, the 200, the 350. Just from the landing points, the apexes, we can see there is for sure that um, staircasing, stair stepping effect happening with the design of these irons. One thing I like is that stepping in the carry. Obviously, you have the weakest lofts out yeah. of all these, but you have a consistent step all the way down as lofts get stronger. We don't really see anything that's 20, 30 yards long. Right, that's jumping out of there. Yeah, uh, for me, I mean, the 199 carry on the, on the 350, yes, that's a long ways um, for a hit for a seven iron, but it, that's a very strong loft, especially compared to where I'm starting at with my current iron. Um, so it's not out of that range of where we would say, hmm, seems weird. Now what I do think is interesting, if you look at the current, my current 620s versus the T100s, uh, the ball speed, launch angle, spin rate, the um, side angle, carry in total are all almost identical. Very similar. Yep. And we can see on the chart, they're landing in the same spot. So that what that tells me is that 100 performs very similar to my, my 620. I could switch that 100 in right now and see the same ball flight with a very different golf club than my 620. Now, would I choose to do that? I think when you look at the standard deviation, and we would use that for the, as a, a sign of variance in the data, my standard deviation is tighter with my current 620s. Yeah. And I think that just shows you how important having a golf club that looks good to your eye is. Yep. Uh, when I have a golf club that I like to look up, I can focus with, my numbers get much more consistent, very, very tight on the standard deviations there. So. Really cool to see that. Let's see how the uh, the synth angles looked. Yeah, because that'll tell the whole the, story uh, the chart. itself. Yeah, for sure. All right, Kyle, so we've got our chart here with all the raw data. Now we're we're not comparing you versus me. We're comparing the 100 versus the 150 and the 200 and the 350. We're comparing the model of irons against each other. What were some of our takeaways we found with the data? Yeah, so, I mean, the main thing we're going to look at here, since obviously it's a lot of numbers, is descent angle, backspin launch. Mm -hmm. Uh, one thing that I find very uh, unique is obviously our two swings are so different and right. what we play is different. My descent angle is 51.2, yours was 50.9. Yeah. Um, my launch angle was 21.7, yours is 20.9, and then my spin rate was 72.93, yours is 60. You spun 40. the 100 a little more than I did. What's interesting is our peak height, 116 versus 118. Yeah. So we got that T100 iron, we still got that ball in the air pretty yep. easily. Yeah, it got. Up well, having to work quickly, for it either. And not having to work very hard for it. And a very good descent angle, 50 degrees, that ball is going to stop very quick. Yep. Uh, if we look down at the 150s now, um, I think this starts to get a little bit more interesting here. Um, we can see our launch angles maintained about the same. Yep. Our spin rates about the same. Mine maybe dropped a little bit there. Uh, descent angle, we're still at that 50.1 for me and 51.5 for you. Um, for you, you actually saw a little higher peak height, 121 versus 118, so three feet higher, and my peak height stayed the same. Again, that golf club got the got, ball in got there up. very easily. Going down, looking at the 200, here's where we start to see a little bit of that, that launch angle starting to drop down a little bit. A little bit stronger, stronger loft. lofted. Yep. Uh, spin rate's dropping just a little bit. However, our descent angle stayed, yours 49.4, 51.2, our descent angle stayed very high, and then our peak height stayed very high as well too. Um, I'm actually at 128 now with this one, so I, I got quite a bit more height out of the two, T200. So that was pretty cool. And then we look at the 350. Again, we see that launch angle staying around 20 degrees. Um, spin rates did drop a bit here with this one. Which makes sense, the strongest loft out of the bunch. Yep. And then 122, 122. Yeah. So probably the highest that we hit um, any of the golf clubs. I think I had, uh, I remember seeing one, yeah, 132. I had 132 foot apex on one of them. That's uh, that's high. So yeah. th this T-Series iron definitely gets that ball into the air very easily. Well, I think it's the first time in a long time we've seen marketing that actually meets the product. Right. Um, it's often in the golf industry, oh, we, we're going to guarantee you 10 yards longer. Yeah. That's great, but that's that doesn't really do anything for the average for golfer. Sure. Where this, what we're going to see is a lot of those slower swing speed players with T-350 aren't going to struggle as much to get it in the air. You know, one thing coming in to hit these irons that Nikki sit on a few times and what right. we've seen in fittings is you're someone who already hits the ball really high. 
we're going to probably have to actually change what shape you play to get that a little bit lower. Yeah, we might have to go down and down in the numbers basically, right? If you're really favoring that 200, we might, we might have to go to the 150 or 100 to get your ball flight in the right window. Correct. But, I mean, they're very forgiving. We, we hit all of them fairly solid. Uh, these irons are definitely designed for performance and green stopping ability, turf interaction, um, and not worried so much about total raw distance. That's not their main objective, I would say. Which it's about time. Yep. You know, I feel like for the last five years, it's distance, 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 which is sounds great. But what we see often is a lot of players hit four, five, and six iron the same distance. Yeah. Because they're not able to get them airborne. Yeah. And I, I just think you know, for the first time that I can remember, this is a complete lineup from a manufacturer. Yep. And and honestly, with the consistency across the models, this is a set or a, a set of a series of models where if you're um, starting to find that your four fives, your longer irons are going about the same distance, you, you move into a different model, gain a little bit of ball speed, hit that uh, next iron a little farther. So you kind of interchange and work on yeah, the set. Yeah, make a combo there. set. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've been very fortunate. We've had them for a little over a month now, mm -hmm. um, even though at the time of this video, they just came out. Right. We've been seeing this happening in the bays for a month now. Yep. So, so it's not just <laughs> one day of data. You're right. You're uh, right. We've seen it for a month yep. of various yep. golfers from scratch players to 30 handicaps. Yeah. So it's been a, a great time fitting this new product. Um, if you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out. Rather here on YouTube, uh, you can look us up on Instagram. We're gonna try to uh, you know get these tech videos out um, at least once every few weeks for you guys as new product comes out. So if you haven't already, turn on those push bell notifications so that you can make sure that you don't miss any of these videos. As always, we'll catch you on the next one.